Congress. You got a new ad up in South Carolina taking direct aim at Senator Santorum. You call him a corrupt, a corporate lobbyist, a Washington insider with a record of betrayal. You also call him corrupt in that ad. Senator Santorum is standing right here. Uh, are you willing to stand by those charges and explain them? Well, it was a quote somebody did make a survey, and I think he came out as one of the top corrupted agents because he took so much money from the lobbyists. But really, what the whole there it goes again. <laughs> they but, they but, caught you not telling the truth, Rob. But, but re really, <laughs> what really counts is, is his record. I mean, he's a big government, big spending individual because, uh, you know, he, he preached the fact that he wanted to balance budget amendment, but to raise the debt to five times. So he is a big government person. And we, we as Republicans know something about right to work. He supported, uh, he voted against uh, right to work. He voted along with uh, No Child Left Behind to double, you know, the size of the Department of Education. And he also uh, voted to for, for a prescription drug program. So he's a big government person, along with him being very associated with the lobbyists and taking a lot of funds. And also, where did he get, make his living afterwards? I mean, he became a high-powered lobbyist on, on, uh, in Washington, D.C., and he's done quite well. Uh, we checked out Newt on his income. I think we ought to find out how much money he's made from the lobbyists as well. A lot of charges there, sir. Yeah, I was going to say, do I have 20 minutes to answer this? Uh, let's talk about the, the corruption issue. Uh, the, person, the, the group that called me corrupt was a group called Crew. Uh, if you haven't been sued by Crew, you're not a conservative. Uh, uh, Crew is this uh, left-wing organization that puts out a list every election of the top uh, Republicans who have tough races and calls them all corrupt because they take contributions from PACs. Uh, it's, it's a ridiculous charge, it's, and, and you should know better than to, uh, to cite George Soros-like organizations uh, by, to say that, uh, that they're corrupt. So that's number one. I, John, uh, Ron, I'm a conservative. I'm not a libertarian. I believe in some government. I do believe that, that government has, that as a uh, senator from Pennsylvania, uh, that I had a responsibility to go out there and represent the interests of my state. Uh, and that's what I did, to make sure that, that Pennsylvania was able, in formulas and other things, to get its fair share of money back. Uh, I don't apologize for that any more than you did when you uh, earmarked things and, and did things when you were a congressman uh, in, in Texas. As far as the money that I, that I received, uh, you know, I think I'm known in, uh, in this race, and, and I was known in Washington, D.C. as a cause guy. Uh, I am a cause guy. I, I, I care deeply about this country and about the causes that make me, uh, that I think are at the core of this country. And when I left the United States Senate, I got involved in causes that I believe in. I went and worked at the Ethics and Public Policy Center and wrote on the cause of Iran and wrote and lectured all over this country. I got involved with a health care company. Why? Because I was afraid of what was going to happen and I was asked by a health care company to be on their board of directors. Now, I don't know whether you think board of directors are lobbyists. Uh, they're not. Uh, that's the private sector experience that I'm sure that uh, Mitt would, uh, would approve of. Uh, you, you also, I also worked for a coal company. As I mentioned the other day, my grandfather was a coal miner. I grew up in, in, in the coal region. And when I left the United States Senate, one of the big issues on the table was cap and trade, and global warming, and I wanted to stay involved in the fray. So I contacted a local coal company from my area, who, and I asked, I said, look, I want to join you in that fight. I want to work together with you. I want to help you in any way I can to make sure we defeat cap and trade. And so I engaged in that battle. And I'm very proud to have engaged in that battle. Carson, so, you accept it? Wait, you know, it, it is true. I believe Congress should designate how the money should be spent. I, I agree with that. But the big difference between the way I voted and the senator voted is I always voted against the spending. I voted against all the spending. There's only been a couple of appropriations bills I voted for in the past, what, 24, 26 years I've been in Washington. So you're a big spender. That's all there is to it. You're a big government conservative. And uh, you, you don't vote for, uh, you know, right to work and these very important things. And that's what weakens the economy. So uh, to say you're a conservative, I think, is a stretch. But you've convinced a lot of people of it. So but somebody has to point out your record. I, I would not so, uh, No, I, I think I have an opportunity to respond here. I, I convinced a lot of people of it because my record is actually pretty darn good. Uh, I, I supported and voted for a balanced budget amendment, the line item veto. I voted, in fact, I, I used to keep track when I was in the United States Senate of all the Democratic amendments, of all amendments that increase spending. I, I put on the board of something called a spendometer. If you look at my spending record and you, and you take all the, quote, spending groups, I was rated at the top 
or, or near the top every single year. I, I go back to the point. I am not a libertarian, Rod. I agree with you. You vote against everything. I don't vote against everything. I do vote for some spending. I do think governor has a role to play, particularly in defense. We'll let everyone get in here, but first I want to bring in Governor, governor Perry on this. We'll stay on this subject. Don't worry about it. Hang on, I'll, 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 let you, I'll, I'll let you back in here, Ron. You, you, you've called Senator yeah. from the I, I think you've just seen a great example of why I got in this race. Because I happen to think that I'm the only outsider, with the possible exception of John Huntsman, who has not been part of the problem in Washington, D.C. The insiders in Washington, D.C. We, we, uh, we have to nominate someone that can beat Barack Obama that can get the Tea Party behind them, that can go to Washington, D.C. and stop the corrupt spending that's been going on. And it doesn't make any difference whether you're an insider from Washington, D.C. or you're an insider from Wall Street. That is what Americans rightfully see is the real problem in America today. They want someone who has a record of executive governing experience, like I have in Texas. I've been the commander-in-chief of 20,000-plus troops that get deployed. I have been the governor of a state that has created a million net new jobs. That is a record that American people are looking for. That is what Americans are looking for, an outsider that is not corrupted by the process. So, Governor, you're saying Congressman Paul is an insider? I am telling you, anybody that has had as many, I mean, here's what frustrates me, is that you go get the earmarks and then you vote against the bill. Now, I don't know what they call that in other places, but... Congressman Paul in Texas, we call that hypocrisy. Well, I call it being a constitutionalist because I believe we should earmark or designate every penny. You designate weapon systems, you designate money to go to spend a billion dollars on an embassy in Iraq. That's that's an earmark too. I, I say that Congress has more responsibility. But this thing back back to Senator Santorum, you know, he ducks behind this, he's for this balanced budget amendment, but voted five times increase the national debt by trillions of dollars. This is what the whole key party movement's about. Quit. I mean, government's practically stopped at the over increasing the national debt. You did it five times. So what's your excuse for that? That's trillions of dollars. You kept this thing going. You didn't do very much to slow it up when you had a chance. Uh, as a matter of fact, I did slow, uh, do a lot to slow up when I had a chance. I was the author of the only bill that actually repealed a federal entitlement. Uh, welfare reform. I, I actually promoted and talked uh, and tried to pass Social Security reform. I worked on Medicare and Medicaid. I was one of the only guys out there in a time, Ron, when we were running surpluses that was out there talking about the need for long-term entitlement reform, which is where the real problem is. When the government runs up a tab and you don't have the money no, no longer to pay, then you have to increase the debt ceiling. But every time, we tried to tie it with reducing spending. Uh, we are at a point right now where we've blown the doors off of it. And as you know, back in the last in the last go round, I stood up and said, no, we shouldn't increase the debt ceiling because we've gone too far. But you know, routine debt ceiling increases have happened throughout the, the course of this country for 200 years.